Okay, so we're going to discuss today all about your <coughs> hemoglobin. So hemoglobin is actually a globular protein. And this one represents your quaternary structure of your <coughs> protein. But this one is globular. And this one is actually the first uh, protein to be identified through your X-ray crystallography. So our hemoglobin is made up of the two main component. We have your hem and we have your globin. So your hem is actually your protoporphyrin. It's a ring incorporated with the iron in the ferrostate. And the globin on the other hand, so okay, made up of your four polypeptides. And this one is made up of uh, or you call it as your tetramer kasi apat na polypeptide and it's a pair or you call it as a dimer. Okay, so Okay, so we have here the basic composition of our hemoglobin. So your hemoglobin, there are four in a globin chain and each of that contains also here your Okay, four in a protoporphyrin ring. And each of the protoporphyrin ring would have here one iron in your ferrostate. So apparently you have four in a protoporphyrin ring. And we have also here the four iron. Because each of them would have here the iron at the center. And that one is in the ferrostate. Four then a globin. It's a tetramer. And um, two pairs. It's actually two pairs. That's a dimer. And then um, at the center of that the entire structure, you have your one, one, two, three DPG. Okay, we have here the okay the standard method here or the recommended method for your hemoglobin determination. We have your cyan meth hemoglobin. Okay, other name for that is your fairy hemoglobin, or you could also have here your hemoglobin cyanide method. This method of um, hemoglobin termination is a spectrophotometric method. So you use here your spectrophotometer in order for you then to measure the concentration of your hemoglobin. Okay, this method of your hemoglobin termination, we're able to measure all forms of your hemoglobin. Mean to say all types of your hemoglobin present in your sample, it could detect that one and able to measure if they are present except your salt hemoglobin. So I mean to say, kahit my salt hemoglobin tayo sa ating um, sample, it will not be detected by your cyan meth hemoglobin method. Okay, for this method, our agent is your Dropkin's reagent. And we have here the composition of our Dropkin's reagent. So first one, we have your potassium ferricyanide. Your potassium ferrocyanide convert your hemoglobin to your methemoglobin. Remember you, that your hemoglobin would have here the iron in a ferrostate. However, here once it's been converted to your methemoglobin, it become the iron become the ferric ferric state, and that's um catabolized here by our potassium ferricyanide. The next one you have your potassium cyanide. Okay, there's another reagent incorporated in your cyan meth or your Dropkin's uh, solution. So this uh, potassium cyanide convert your meth hemoglobin further to your cyan meth hemoglobin. Another one, you have your non-detergent, non-ionic detergent that try to lyse the RBC. And at the same time, this component here also try to reduce the turbidity of your sample. Uh, because again, um, the third bead na uh, sample here would affect your result because again, this is a spectrophotometric method. Then we have your potassium dihydrogen phosphate. So this potassium dihydrogen phosphate replaces the original reagent nito na in the form of your sodium bicarbonate. Okay, then um, this one... Original, if, uh, if you try to utilize this uh, reagent, the reading time is 15 minutes. But upon replacement of your potassium dihydrogen phosphate, the, the reading time is reduced to your 5 minutes na lang. 
Okay, then we have here the procedure for this one. So just need to have your 20 microliter of your blood. You can use your hemoglobin pipette. Okay, in order for you to have this 20 microliter of the blood, or you could have your micro pipette. Then you add 5 ml of your Dropkins reagent. You try to mix by inversion. Okay, this gives you a 1 is to 1 is to 251 dilution. 20 microliter, 5 ml. Okay, that's 1 is to 251 dilution. Okay, then try to incubate at room temperature. And try to read here the result after 5 minutes. Okay, because of this one. You read the result here at 540 nanometer wavelength of your spectrophotometer. Then try to uh, obtain here either the absorbance or you could have, depending on your, it could have a direct, direct na hemoglobin concentration na or you could have your concentration lang or absorbance lang where you need to compute for that. But then apparently this spectrophotometric method here would allow you to measure your hemoglobin. And again, this is your cyan methemoglobin method. Okay, now we have here the interference primarily uh, encountered with your cyan methemoglobin. Because remember that your cyan methemoglobin is a spectrophotometric method. So, if your sample or your solution here would be turbid or cloudy, so since this one is based on the absorption of the lights, that's, a, that's the principle of your spectrophotometry. And therefore, it would have your high uh, result would be obtained for that. So, we have here some of the reasons why you could have here a turbid sample or solution. And so, we have here also some remedy that, that eventually we can do in order for us then to correct for the possible interference. First one, increase WBC count. Um, WBC count more than 20,000. We can also have here increased platelet count that's more than 700,000 could have your turbid na sample or a solution because of that. So for this one, you need to, all you need to do is just your blood sample plus your agent. Diba nag-add ka na ng blood sa your agent mo, like 20 ml of your blood, that's whole blood. Okay, then um, for this one, you need to collect your blood in the ENTA. Okay, so whole blood, 20 ml of your whole blood, okay, or the blood collected in the ETA, then 5 ml of your Dropkins reagent. All you need to do here is just centrifuge, okay, your mixture, and then after that one, try to get the supernatant dun sa taas. Diba, after centrifugation, when you set that other portion, so you get the upper portion, supernatant. Okay, that's what you're going to measure under your, uh, with your spectrophotometry or your spectrophotometer. Another turbid na uh, sample here or solution may be related to increase uh, lipids related to your to try to cause here or produce lipemia. Highly lipemic sample maybe eventually that would be related here to your high lipid na uh, concentration. It might be again a patient like uh, the patient has uh, or had a heavy meal right before the blood extraction. And therefore, I expect to have here, hindi pa siya na masyado na clear ang kanyang plasma. And therefore, you will have here high lipid concentration of that. And it would appear that sample here to be highly lipemic. For this one, you just need to perform here your blanking procedure. Okay, for your blank, you need to read your blank right before you read your sample. You prepare your sample blank here by 0 0.01 ml of the plasma of the patient, not the whole blood. Okay, and then plus uh, 5 ml of the Dropkins. Okay, then after that one, uh, before you read your uh, absorbance of your sample, you read first the absorbance of your blank. Okay, this would eventually try to correct for the background related to your turbidity because of your lipemia. Another one, turbidity may be related also here to the presence of your abnormal hemoglobin. So we have your hemoglobin C or your hemoglobin S. Okay, for this one, you just need to perform here your dilution. You need to dilute your whole blood or your sample. So, for our dilution, we'll be needing here 1 is to 2 na dilution. 1 is to 2 dilution is prepared here by 1 part of your blood, whole blood, then you add 1 part of your distilled water. That gives you 1 is to 2 na dilution. Okay, then after that one, you add, okay, pag na-dilute mo na siya, so get 20 microliter of that, 
of your diluted na sample, then you add 5 ml of your Dropkin's reagent. Okay, then after that one, you read under the microscope. And whatever your result or reading, you multiply the result by 2 because you have diluted your blood sample. Okay, then we have also here the presence of your high level of your plasma proteins, like in the case of your Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia, multiple myeloma. So that would also, again, that's why I try to induce your relo formation. Okay, for this one, all you need to do is to add here your 0.1 gram of your potassium carbonate. Uh, potassium carbonate could also be, or could, that could already be incorporated if your Dropkin's reagent here, commercially prepared, has been already used this one. Try to use already this reagent, potassium dihydrogen phosphate. So ito na siya, si potassium carbonate natin. On the other hand, the presence of your carboxyhemoglobin. So, carboxyhemoglobin would be uh, very high for those smokers. Okay, so the problem with that, it could have the erroneous result or interference here because your carboxyhemoglobin requires or it takes one R for that to be converted first to your cyan methemoglobin. And therefore, madidili ang ating reading time. It would have your erroneous results you might eventually underestimate the real concentration or the actual concentration of your hemoglobin, especially if meron ka dito na cyan methemoglobin or meron ka ang carboxy hemoglobin. Okay, another method here for your hemoglobin identification is through your electrophoresis. Electrophoresis based on the principle of your migration of your protein in a support medium. So, like, for example, itong support medium mo, like, we are using agar as our support medium and allow our uh, sample here to be applied on this one, and then your hemoglobin will going to migrate according to their electrical charge. Okay, so, okay, for your electrophoresis, okay, you can add, again, this is very important, um, the method for your hemoglobin because this will specifically determine the type of your hemoglobin, like hemoglobin H, hemoglobin I, hemoglobin BART, hemoglobin A1, hemoglobin F, something like that. So we're able to separate them through their electrical charges, through their migration pattern, and therefore identifying here if kung ang patient natin ba ay may hemoglobin S, hemoglobin S pertains to your sickle cell anemia, Hemoglobin C ba siya? So, this is uh, very important. Okay, when you're doing your electrophoresis, you perform first here your, you try to subject that first to your alkaline pH na support medium in the form of your cellulose acetate agar. Okay, so cellulose acetate agar has been carried here at the pH of 8.4 to 8.6. And the buffer for that is your trace eta boric acid buffer. And the stain is your poncho S. Para sa nang stain natin, okay, like, if you apply, okay, your sample here, so like your serum sample, apply mo dito, you try to apply also electrical current. Okay, electrical current here will allow your protein to migrate according to, to their electrical charge. So when you apply your protein here, they try to assume your net negative charge. Okay, net negative charge. And then, they try to migrate towards your positive na electrode. This is your anode. Again, they are the assume a net negative charge. And ma-migrate sila papunta sa ating, elect ating um, positive electrode. You call that one your anode. Okay, then after that one, so since like this one, pag nag-separate na sila, okay, mag ang separated na protein band, Katulad ito, may mga protein band. May parang ganyan, may color-color ito. May protein band. Para ma-visualize ang ating... Uh, anyway, ang separated na protein band, you call that once your electrophoretogram. Then, para mas makita natin ang kanila mga band, because of their separation, nagbibigyan natin siya ng color by staining your electrophoretogram. Okay, then after that one, if you wanted to measure the concentration of each of this, 
the, try to read that one with your densitometer. So, magkakaroon siya ng percentage or the concentration of each of your protein. And that would identify here if the patient would have abnormality in your hemoglobin re related. These are your, this would help you identify your hemoglobinopathies. Like, okay, your abnormal hemoglobin H or hemoglobin I, something like that. Okay, so in the alkaline pH, electrophoresis, it will eventually separate your protein band in the following. So, ang malapit dito sa anode natin, okay, ito yung mga fastest moving. So, dito ka nag-apply, so papunta doon. So, ang malalayo, those are considered here as the fastest moving. So, you can have here, hemoglobin H. Okay, na next na protein band, you have your hemoglobin I, hemoglobin bars. Then we have your hemoglobin A1, hemoglobin F. And for this protein band, there are three protein na pwede natin makikita dito. So, may to si mag, pag may karoon ka dito na protein band na ganito, you could not differentiate if what's present. Is that hemoglobin S ba? Hemoglobin D or hemoglobin G. The same through with this one. Hemoglobin C, hemoglobin E, hemoglobin O, hemoglobin A2, you try to migrate to the same protein band. So, again, okay lang if, for example here, sa mga ito na hemoglobin, because they try to separate, they are, they are separated individually. But in the case of this one, like, by, pag may hemoglobin S ang patient, hemoglobin D, hemoglobin G, hindi natin malaman kung anong specific na hemoglobin really present among the three. So, therefore, you need to further, okay, subject this one to another electrophoresis. But this time, you try to apply, you see here your acidic na pH na support medium or agar. That's your citrate agar. The citrate agar electrophoresis being carried here at the pH of 6.0 to 6.2. So this would be the order, the migration of your proteins. If you try to subject this one to your uh, citrate agar. So hemoglobin C, okay, hemoglobin S, hemoglobin O, D, G, hemoglobin A, E, and F. Okay, so again, those are fastest moving. Ito yung mga slow moving natin kasi this is your point of application. So, mabagal sila mag-migrate. So, notice here like in the case of your SDG, if you try to carry this one in your uh, cellulose acetate, which is your alkaline pH. So, dito, dito na yung maglubin S natin. Okay? We have here your DG. Okay, so they are still here. Okay, and so, pwede natin ma-separate hemoglobin S with that one. But still, your, o, your D and G still migrate for this one. You can further um, measure or try to perform other tests for you to really differentiate. Okay, kung ano pa talaga siya, hemoglobin D or G for that. But, subjecting here from your alkaline pH to your acidic pH electrophoresis will help you then to specifically differentiate those are mga for those significant na mga hemoglobinopathy, especially if they tend to migrate on the same protein band for this one. In this uh, agar, so since they migrate the same protein band, so pwede mo sila further separate with your subjecting it further to your acidic na pH. Okay, now we go to your hemoglobin. So our hemoglobin is a respiratory pigment. It's a pigment that try to transport our blood gases. Again, your hemoglobin try to transport your oxygen from your lungs and try to deliver that one to your tissues. And at the same time, also try to transport your carbon dioxide from your tissues and try to deliver that one to your lungs for eventual excretion. Okay, the RBC mass is primarily made up of 28 to 35% of that is made up of your hemoglobin. 71% of your RBC mass is responsible for that is the water content and 7% made up of your lipids. Okay, the RBC try to synthesize our hemoglobin starting only in your rubricite stage. Again, this is where your 
uh, RBC would assume here a uh, pink gray na cytoplasm because again on that stage the rubricite natin it is where your hemoglobin synthesis starts and then try up to your metarobricite so that's concentrate here 65 percent of your hemoglobin production and the third remaining 35 percent of your hemoglobin is being synthesized up to your in your reticulocyte stage and remember that your mature rbc is no longer capable of your hemoglobin synthesis Okay, one gram of your hemoglobin could transport 1.34 ml of your oxygen. It could further transport 3.47 milligrams of your iron. Again, the basic component of our hemoglobin again. So we have here your four na protoporphyrin ring. Each of that would have your four iron. I mean, each of that would have one iron. Since apat ang protoporphyrin ring natin. So parang ganito lang siya. Okay, parang ring, you have your ring here and at the center of that, you have your iron in the ferrostate. So, there are four nitong ring. So, may apat, a uh, total of four then na uh, iron because each of your ring, for the forfeiting ring, will have also here the iron inside of that. And we have also here the four globin strain, the polypeptide, the tetramer, and we have also here one, two, three DPG at the center of your four na mga polypeptides. Okay, we start the discussion with your hemoglobin production with our heme synthesis. Okay, your heme synthesis is occurring here in the mitochondria and in the cytoplasm of your bone marrow. Because remember that your mga immature RBC natin, starting with your cellulite rubricite, Okay, metarobicite, they are still found in your bone marrow. So we have here the steps in your heme synthesis. So you need to memorize all this one, including here the enzymes needed for the for the uh, to try to catabolize each of your metabolic reactions. Okay, you start here with your succinyl CoA combining with your glycine. To form here your dala or your delta amino levulinic acid. It's being catalyzed by the enzyme ala synthase. Okay, then, um, okay, ito ay nasa mitochondria. Okay, then after that one, after you produce your dala, okay, so dalawang dala combine. Catalyzed by their enzyme, ala dehydratase, to so form here your... So, pag ditong dala na to, na-produce tayo from the mitochondria, papasok, pag nakaproduce ka ng dala, papasok ito sa cytoplasm natin. Okay, then after that one, papasok sa cytoplasm, it will be converted to become here your porphobilinogen. Okay, so catalyzed by the enzyme ala dehydratase. Then your porphobilinogen will be converted to your hydroxymethylpilin by the enzyme porphobilinogen deaminase. Okay, you let the first step conversion to your verdala here would eventually taking place in your, mitochond in your mitochondria. Then papasok ito sa ating cytoplasm further to this one, so hydroxymethylpilin. Okay, after you have produced already your hydroxymethylbilin, okay, your hydroxymethylbilin will be converted next to your uroporphyrinogen 3. Okay, you'll be needing the enzyme uroporphyrinogen 3 synthase. Okay, um, anyway, for this pathway, you can refer to your book. There's a pathway for that. Okay, then after that one, your uroporphyrinogen 3 will be converted to your coproporphyrinogen 3. We'll be needing that. This is, that one is catabolized by the enzyme uroporphyrinogen 3 decarbox, uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase. Then after that one, coproporphyrinogen 3, okay, enters again your mitochondria from the cytoplasm. will be converted to your protoporphyrinogen 9 by the enzyme coproporphyrinogen oxidase. The protoporphyrinogen 9 
So, we reduce here to your protoporphyrin 9 by the enzyme protoporphyrin nogen oxidase. Then, if you have your protoporphyrin 9, you need to incorporate the iron in a ferrous state. You'll be needing the enzyme ferrochelitis or your hem or your hem synthase. And what you produce for that is already your hem. Then, after that, one, your hem, pupunta sa cytoplasm natin, magkocombine sa globin, and therefore, able to form here your hemoglobin. So again, you start with a glycis is an echo A, converted to your ala, dala. Okay, and then your dala papasok sa ating, from the mitochondria, papasok siya sa ating cytoplasm. Your dala will be converted to your PBG, porphobilinogen. The porphobilinogen will be converted to your hydrosimethylbilin. Hydrosimethylbilin will be converted to your uroporphinogen 3. For the converting that one to your coproporphinogen 3, the coproporphinogen 3, papasok babalik siya sa mitochondria, will be converted to your protoporphinogen 9. Protoporphinogen 9 will be reduced to your protoporphinogen 9. And lastly, you need to incorporate the iron with your ferrochelity, so your hem synthase, to your protoporphinogen 9 to form here your hem. Then your hem papasok sa cytoplasm, magkocombine sa ating hemoglobin para makapag-produce ka ng hemoglobin. Okay, then we have also here for the iron. So basically, your iron, we'll be discussing the iron later on, but apparently the iron here that might be in the form of the ferric iron is being transported in our body. So pwede ito galing from the food that we are eating, rich in the ferric iron. This one is bound, circulated, and our body bound to your transport protein ng iron. You call it once your transferrin. Okay, the transferrin transport carrying this ferric iron here and try to deliver that one to your young RBC sa ating bone marrow. So, magkocombine siya, magbabind siya dun sa receptor niya in the form of your apoferritin. And then try to deliver the iron in a ferric state. Then the ferric iron will be reduced to your ferrous iron with your ferric reductase. Then if you have already your ferrous na iron, so ito na siya. Okay, your ferrous iron, it will be incorporated to your protoporphyrin 9. Okay, by the enzyme ferrochelity, so your hem synthase. And therefore, what you produce for that will be your hem. Okay, and then further combining here with the globin to form here your hemoglobin. All right. 